So the site formerly consisted of a number of residential and commercial lots, as you'll see in the screen, including the Morwell Squash Club, and then it was consolidated into one lot as part of the GovHub development. The floorboards you see in the ground floor meeting rooms are the same floorboards that were salvaged in the demolition in the Morwell Squash Club, and they were repurposed and now form part of the site's history. The site is located at the tail end of Church Street and was chosen to help revitalise the main street and create a greater sense of activation. So the traditional owners of the land is Glawak, Gunai Kurnai Land and Waters Aboriginal Corporation. Glawak contributed to the development of this building via a number of artworks you'll see in the ground floor. You've got the interpretive panel in the entry airlock. The artwork was completed by a local graphic designer and the written panel accompanying the artwork is completed by elders of the region. And it was positioned in this location to remind visitors and tenants as they enter the building as to the creation of country. You also note a number of artworks outside the ground floor meeting rooms and they were completed by local Koori artists, each centred on a Gunai Kurnai dreaming story. For many years, the Cold Fire Power Station was the major employer in the region. However, in 2018, the power station shut down, which was really devastating news for the Latrobe Valley. As a result, it required a Victorian government response to bring hundreds of public sector jobs to the region. In 2018, the Premier announced the appointment of Castle Rock property to deliver the Latrobe Valley GovHub as part of a $266 million transition package to encourage decentralisation of roles and services from Melbourne and boost local jobs. So the GovHub is a genesis of that commitment. It's a $30 million purpose-built hub to house 300 local public sector roles. And it's expected to generate a forecast annual $15 million economic boost for the valley. So we first came to site um, in February of 2020. The construction or the main structure was already up and the roof was on. Our main goal was to scope the job and understand how we're going to install from there. We, there were some specific guidelines that we had to adhere to. The first one was analysing the risk of the pitches of the roof. And the second one was maximising the system size with the space we had on the roof. And we also had to integrate with their BMS platform in the building, as well as the Fronius web app. The project was started on the 27th of January. During that week, we started with a few guys on site and ramped up between two to six guys. And it took about three and a half weeks from start to finish for the installation of the solar system. Jinko Solar was chosen for this project because it fits in with the customer, it fits in with us, as well as they use up-to-date technology, monoperk, half-cell technology, as well as the fact that they're reliable. They've been in the industry for a long time and they're one of the biggest manufacturers of solar panels in the industry. It's a clip-lock roof, so we've got clip-lock clamps on there. So we chose Clenergy for the mounting system on this one. We had to actually engineer the system specifically for this roof. We're up a bit higher here and through Morwell we do get some extreme winds and some weather. So we got that engineered and we've actually shortened the clip lock spacing substantially, which increases the structural integrity of the panels while they're on the roof. It was a 99 kilowatt system, 99.9, .9, so they maximised the STC size system they could install. Plus, there wasn't much other roof space besides going on the south facing roof, which they did actually look at doing, but I think they weighed up in the end that they wanted to get the 99 kilowatts on. A few different decisions were made to go with Fronius. One, their durability, um, and their reputation within the Australian market is huge, so that was one aspect. Um, similarly, we were able to mix and match various sized inverters with an eco-inverter, which is a string inverter, as well as the Simos, which are a little bit smaller, but they have multiple strings on them as well. So just a myriad of design requirements, as well as their integration into portals, that was a big thing for the customer. They had used Fronius before, so they understood it, and we have also used them as well. Castle Rock, they're familiar with the solar industry and solar components. It was great to join their team and help them through the process. We did have to educate them on the specifics of this site and how all the different components would interact with each other. Uh, with a system like this, with these buildings, to get the most out of it, they've put the extra inverter in to maximise the roof and that just makes sense for the customer to spend a tiny bit more to get more performance and the, the payback is huge for them because some customers are short-sighted and will only go with the three inverters in this scenario and they don't maximise the 99 kilowatts of panels that they've put on the roof. So in putting the extra inverter on, they'll get the best bang for buck, basically, for the system. 
We all know construction of buildings has a huge impact on our environment. So Castle Rock take a very firm approach to sustainability. It is at the forefront of every one of our designs where we look to achieve a five star neighbours rating, five star green star, introducing as many sustainability principles as we can, including the installation of solar panels. In fact, the majority of our buildings have solar panels installed on the roof, as we see firsthand the benefit this provides. Not only does it improve the building's energy performance, but it ultimately helps to reduce the tenant's operational costs. For the landlord, they want lock people in for longer time, so if they can offer a cheaper power over the future of their tenancy, it's a win-win for everyone.